Hallelujah. No, that's wrong. No, the worship scene, just chat scene one. Church scene one. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. Welcome tonight to our Wednesday night Bible study by your side table talk with Pastor Andy and Pastor Marie Valdez from Dublin, Ireland. <laughs> from Culver City. And we're going to um, open service and word of prayer and then we're going to worship the lord amen so let's bow our heads glory god we come before you we thank you god for this day you've given us god another day god to exalt you father god that with all that we are god another day father god just to be grateful for god we give you all the honor pray you move tonight father god to the word let let it go deep father god let no one personally leave this stream the same but leave changed god be renewed by your, your your word and your spirit god we give you all the honor all the glory in his name we say amen amen, amen. let's just worship the lord
it's all about you. And it's all about you. 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 It's all about you, Lord. It's all about you. God is good, amen? Again, we just want to welcome you here tonight to our Wednesday night Bible study. And, uh, you know, by his side, table talk, amen? And amen. so we just, uh, we're glad you're, you're, you're tuning in here today. And, uh, and believe this, you know, that, hey, whatever you're going through here this afternoon or this last few days, remember, God is always in control. You know, we try That's to right. be, you know, people who always be, you know, in charge of our lives and stuff and it's not until we find out, you know, that really God is in control of everything. Right? Amen. Yes. And so, um, you know, we have a couple of we have a couple of prayer requests, or we actually have a couple of praise reports. We have a couple of praise reports. We want to let everybody know that um, some people we've been praying for that God moved on their on their health and stuff. And we got a uh, uh, Karen's sister a praise report. Her sister Donna's cell count jumped over two points. Oh, amen. It's enough for her to have her chemotherapy. Yay. Amen. So God is good. Amen. Yes. Thank you, Lord. And then also Carol, Carol's uh, daughter, who was an accident. Uh, she's she's fine now too. She's fine. All right. Yeah, she's better now. And so, um, and then God also, you know, believe this. You know, whenever we pray, you have to believe that God's going to do something. Yes. Amen. You can't just pray and think, well, if God, if you could, maybe. Hey, the Bible says that God is there. He's, you know, there when we speak, when we talk and stuff, and he's around us. And that's why we have the Holy Spirit inside us. Yes. And so, you know, it's good to know that as we pray, God hears from heaven and God acts. Yes. Amen. And people's Amen. lives are being touched. People are being healed in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So, again, we just thank you. And, uh, you know, I got to praise you for it, too. We, we gave out some food today at our church uh, right there on uh, Lake Isabella Boulevard. And uh, we we fed, we gave over, um, let me see, we gave enough food for... 25 families oh amen, amen. 25 good. families That's wonderful and so we uh, and we have more we have more coming and stuff and you know we do this all because of jesus amen we don't yes. we're not looking for anything we, we know we invite people to come on out we had a good group coming out and help us out there and we had mm -hmm. it was like eight of us you know and we just people are driving through we didn't get down they just came up drove up we put food the boxes of food in their car and stuff and we had like a lot of stuff a lot of stuff and uh i just want to thank god for elisa and christine amen and, and linda and uh, Sebastian and uh, uh, Debbie, uh, Pastor Bill's daughter, came out and, and uh, she brought another friend with her. And uh, it was just a good time. Bob came. Amen. Bob from Cross Street was over there. Right. And he came yes. and stuff. And so it's we had a, we had a good turnout. Good turnout. Real and good. then we gave a lot of stuff away. All amen. Right. And it's all because of Jesus. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Praise God. People yes. were happy. Amen. They were happy to get. You know, we had we had oranges. We had uh, potatoes. We had onions, cabbage. All mm -hmm. the good stuff, and then we had a, we had a, uh, it was a good time, a good time good. in Jesus, amen. Praise God. And so, in saying that, I mean, you this this Sunday we're having services Sunday online again at ten thirty a.m. It's gonna be this Saturday at ten thirty, and so invite someone to watch online. It's gonna be a good message, amen. I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about you know not end times, but you know how you and I can be ready for the end times, amen. Amen. And so you know because it's not the end times, amen. All this has happened with the coronavirus. Mm -hmm. It's not the end times. We no people tend to talking about you know doomsday and all this stuff, but hey, we're a long ways far. That people still gotta get saved. A lot of people right. that don't know Jesus, and so the Lord's not That's gonna right. you know, uh, he's not gonna come back until we see you know the right number of the people get give their lives to the Lord. Amen. That's right. Amen. Praise God. And, and saying that tonight, I got my lovely wife with me here tonight, and so. Um, <laughs> Yeah. Okay. We want to pray for Francine too tonight, but we're gonna we're gonna okay. pray. We're gonna pray now for all the needs here. If you have a yes. need here this morning, Amen. Amen. If you have a need this morning, <laughs> I want you to to email or to send us to us on our message. And we'll pray for it now. Amen. If you're, we'll if you're watching online, 
Amen. So we're going to pray, but we have to believe. You know, let me tell you, the Bible says, again, like I told you, that the Lord, you know, he, actually in his Psalms, it says that God never gives a deaf ear to his right. saints. Right. He never, you know, his arm isn't too short where he can't reach and touch. That's right. And also says in the John, the Gospel of John, that Jesus said this, he says, he said this, he says, even greater power will you have. You know, you know what I'm doing, yeah. you greater, have greater power. And so we have to believe that, that we have the power to cast down all these this sickness and stuff and all these things that happen to us in the name of Jesus. In the name Amen. Of Jesus. So if you're looking, you want you have a prayer request, send it to us. We're going to pray for Francine this, this night. And we have yes. a couple of needs we're going to pray for. Amen. For Nazi too. For Nazi. And amen. Then, um, for Nena. Nena uh -huh. and, and Terry, Terry Valdez. Valdez. Uh -huh. But we're going to pray. And so I'm asking. Yeah. So if you have, you know, give me an amen. If you're watching online here, give me an amen as we pray. And I know you're agreeing with me. Amen. So give me the amen. I know you're watching. Let's pray. Father, right now, amen. in yes. the name of Jesus, yes, God, we pray, Lord. God, for all our needs here tonight. And Lord, we know, God, that your hand is never too short, that you cannot reach and touch, my God. And Father, we pray right now for Francine tonight. God. We pray for Nazi, my God, also, God, that you just touch that household oh, tonight yes, in oh the God. name of Jesus. Yes, and Lord, we know, God, that you're able, Lord. Your word says, God, if yes. we believe, God, God, all we have to do is believe and stand, yes. and you'll do the rest. Oh, and Father, I pray for that whole household now. Yes. I pray that you move with power and might right now in the name of Jesus. And God, again, that you encourage, my God, that you strengthen, my God. And Lord, again, we come against every disease, every sickness now, yes, God. God, we pray for Nena, Jesus. my God, and Terry, my God. We pray yes. as they're there in bed that you touch their yes, lives right oh now God. in Jesus' Ooh. name, too. And Lord, we know, God, that you are there. God, that the healing oil of heaven, yes. the healing oil that will run down Aaron's beard, yes. God, that will begin to heal and touch, yes. my God. And God, we pray, Lord, move in a special way upon their lives, God. And God, again, we thank you for all the praise reports. Yes. We thank you for all you're doing. Again, we lift up all those watching tonight. Yes. God, we pray that you continue you, my God, to bless them oh, yes, and be with Lord. them tonight. Yes, we give you the praise and glory. We thank, thank you ahead you. of time. And Lord, we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. 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 God bless you. Amen. But you know what? Uh, as we begin to talk, we might want to greet everybody. Greet everybody. Say, oh, hi, hi, everybody. It's good that you joined us this evening. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> if you have a Bible tonight, turn your Bible to the Gospel of Luke, chapter mm -hmm. 5. And we're going to look this afternoon at a, a short passage of Scripture where... The Lord, he healed a, a man. He healed a man, but it was more than just his faith. It was other people's faith involved. So I want to read it to you mm -hmm. in Luke chapter 5. You get a Bible. It's on page uh, 1,000. No, sorry, 926. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. That's my Bible. That's not your Bible. Amen. Luke, Luke 5. Luke 5. I'm going to start on verse 17. Okay. So I'll, I'll give you guys a chance to find it. Mm -hmm. Luke chapter 5. Yes. And verse 17. <laughs> Amen. Amen. You know, your your title might say this. It might say, Jesus forgives and heals a paralytic. Uh, my title for this message, for me personally, is helping others find freedom. Oh, amen. Helping others find freedom. You know, we're we're called to be yeah. freedom fighters for others. Amen. <laughs> you know that? You know, and uh, and if you got it, okay, let's just read. Let's read the first Amen. one. We'll pray. Amen. Now it happened on a certain day as he was teaching that there was a Pharisees and teachers of the law sitting by who had come out of every town of Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem and the power of the Lord was present to heal them. Then behold, men brought on a bed a man who was paralyzed whom they sought out to bring in and lay before him. And when they could not find how they might bring him in because of the crowd, they went up on the top, on the top of the housetop and let him down with his bed through the, the tiling in the midst before Jesus. When he saw their faith, he said to him, Man, your sins are forgiven you. And the scribes and the Pharisees began to reason, saying, Who is this who speaks blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God alone? But when Jesus perceived their thoughts, he answered and said to them, Why are you reasoning in your hearts? He says, Which is easier to say, Your sins are forgiven, or to say, Rise up and walk. But that you may know the power of the Son of God, or the Son of Man, has power on earth to forgive sins. He says to the man who is paralyzed, I say to you, arise, take up your bed, and go to your house. <laughs> Immediately he rose up before them, took up what he had been lying on, and the Bible says, and departed his own house, glorifying God. <laughs> and they were all amazed, and they all glorified God, and were filled with fear, saying, mm -hmm. we have seen strange things today. Amen. Amen. Or, you know, your Bible might say this, we've never seen anything like this before. <laughs> Amen. Mm -hmm. Let's pray. Father, we thank you again tonight. 
We pray for your word, Lord. Yes. We pray that it would find a good place in our hearts, God. And yes. Father, we just thank you, my God, for the opportunity that we can share and we can just break bread, your word, my God, and, and be here in a special way tonight. And Father, again, we thank you. We, we love you. We, we give you the praise and glory in Jesus' precious name. Amen. And amen and amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. You know, so as you look at this scripture, mm -hmm. you know, and I've, you know, you know, many of us heard many, probably many messages about this scripture. I've actually preached many times about this. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you know, it's it, it's a short passage, you know, it's not real big, but we will meet a crippled man who was lowered on the mat, on the mat, or mm -hmm. to the roof mm -hmm. on a mat by his friends at the mm -hmm. feet of Jesus, mm -hmm. a guy who was never the same again. Amen. Right. It's like, you know, you know, that is not the mission of the church or mission of, of yes. us as individuals, you know, that we want always want to see help other people. You know, even people, you know, sometimes we look and we say, well, you know what, I don't know, you know what, I'm not really, you know, an up for, a forward person. I'm a background person. And that's okay. Because even that, even better, because, you know, the Lord really uh, looks at, you know, not people that show bold or put up things on front, but he always looks at people that nobody ever sees. Mm -hmm. You know, he looks at people that aren't looking for the spotlight or not looking for, you know, uh, you know, the, all the Broadway, the show on Broadway. And, you know, and I believe that, you know, when you care for people, you don't care who, you know, who's watching, who's the thing, because, you know, as a Christian, we know as Christians that we're doing all for God. That's right. Amen. Amen. We do it for the Lord. Amen. And, you know, and, and yes. in this statement, you know, this whole scripture, you know, it, it can apply to anybody. It can apply to us, you know, many of us who came out of this lifestyle that, you know, we, you know, we abuse our bodies with all kinds of stuff. But thank God that God changed us. Amen. Mm -hmm. Thank God that, you know, that, you know, because we can apply this to our, our own personal life because many of us, that the Lord brought us out of bondage. Right. He brought us out of all kinds of bondages, all kinds of chains and stuff that held us down. Not maybe chains, physical chains, but spiritual chains. Mm -hmm. Chains that were, you know, of the, of the, of the spiritual aspect where, you know, where you can't even see, but you know that you're in bondage. You're, mm. you know, you're you're a slave to. You know, many people get enslaved to, you know, to alcohol or you know, to drugs and different things, and mm -hmm. you know, pornography, all kinds of different stuff, and and not knowing how to get themselves out. Right. Not knowing how to get themselves out because you know, and the, and the reality is that you know, we probably know many people who are sometimes even like this now mm -hmm. that they're still struggling with their their own personal life. They're still struggling with things that they're that they've been held up and. You know, and but for us as Christians, we know that because Jesus set us free, right? You know, Amen. and you know the, the scripture says, "If the Son sets you free, you are free indeed." Mm -hmm. And actually, in the Book of Romans, right, Romans, mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. you know that Jesus was the one; He was the way maker when there was no way maker, right? You know, and you know, and sometimes we forget those people. You know, right now, you know, we have like a lot of people working in the front line, working in the hospitals, and and helping other people. Man, man, those people are heroes. Yes, they are. You know, because think about it. I mean, right. you know, I, I I thought about this the other, the other night. I was thinking, sit lying in bed, and I was thinking, man, you got to be really brave to do that, to go to a hospital knowing that, hey, I can go there. I can probably, I might be able to catch this disease, and I can right. get sick and die, you know? But they're yeah, that's putting brave, their, their right? lives on line for us, for people like us. Right. They're, they're caring enough for us. In the same way, like these guys. These guys cared for their friend. Mm -hmm. They cared for their friend. You know, and sometimes, you know, we, or, you know, many times we can't forget the people who helped us. Right. We can't forget those who, you know, who helped us and helped us along the way and stuff. And, you know, and, and I know that, you know, so, sometimes we look for answers and sometimes all the wrong places. But we have to find what's open for us. What does God mm. want to do in your life today personally? Mm. Amen. What miracle can he do? To show you the, the greatness of his, of his grace, of his mercy. Amen. Mm. Amen. Amen. And I know you you preached this, you preached on, on this message many times. Mm -hmm. What's your what's your input on this? Tell me your input. Well, I, I preached about it on, in Mark, uh, Mark um, chapter two. It talks about the same story. Mark is uh, sharing his perception of it. And um, what I was impressed with was that you know the friends cared about their friend, and um, back then they didn't have wheelchairs or anything like that. They carried him on a stretcher, so the four of them had to carry him on a stretcher. And in Mark, it doesn't say in Luke that there were crowds. In Mark, it says that there were, it was so crowded because so many people wanted to hear Jesus. And they went to see him that even outside it was crowded. So they were, to me, I mean, you know, they were good friends that they didn't give up. They pushed past that crowd, you know. 
and um, just to get their friend to the feet of Jesus. You know, that's what really impressed me that they were determined. They had determination. That's what I got out of that. You know, they were determined to get their friend to Jesus because they knew that it was going to be only Jesus that could heal them. You know, nobody else could do anything for their friend. He was like that since probably birth, you know. Um, and they were determined to not let him down, you know, and they took him there. And that's what I got out of that, you know. Um, so much more um, I got out of how they use their gifts, different gifts that, you know, and the determination, you know, to push pa past the crowds, but also to go to the roof, to be able to cut through and determine exactly where he was at. And, you know, and that the Lord, I don't want to give up your Bible study. No, 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 no. <laughs> and that the Lord you. seen their faith, not his faith. And that sometimes when our faith is down, you know, it's kind of like us, you know, um, when I'm down and out and everything, you come and encourage me, you know, and um, I do the same with you, yes. you know, I'll That's say, right. stop listening to the devil. Come on, snap out of it, you know. And you do. So we, yeah, so we're there for one another, you know, and that's what their faith, their faith was there for, for him. And because of their faith, they got healed, you know. Amen. Yeah. So God is good, you know. Yeah, so, so you know. That's what I got out of it. No, yeah, you're right. So, but they must have heard about Jesus, huh? Oh, yeah. They must have heard, you know, hey, you know what? We heard he healed some other people. We heard, you know, actually, I was looking at this, you know, and, and Luke, you know, Luke has like a lot of stuff, but, you know, it was right before, he, right after he called, you know, the, the disciples, you know, he, he seen them fishing, right? And mm -hmm. then, and then it, the Bible says in verse 12 that he was a certain city, a man who was full of, of leprosy, saw Jesus and fell on his face and, and explored and saying, Lord, if you're willing, you can make me clean. Then he put his hand and touched him saying, I am willing to be cleansed. Mm -hmm. And so... Jesus healed this guy with his leper, mm -hmm. and you know, and then you know, and then, and then all, and then the Bible says it happened on a certain day right after this that Jesus is there and he's he's preaching at Peter's mm -hmm. house, right? Because mm -hmm. that's Peter's in-law's house, right? Right. Uh huh. And he's there and he's preaching, and all of a sudden, like you said, there, there were so many people there that you know the, the guys, his friends, his guys' friends, see and said, "Well, we can't get him to the bottom, so hey, let's lower him to the roof." Right. And at that time, people had these hatched houses where right they had the you know you were able to come in you know you know not, not really second terrible. floor kind of thing yeah, yeah second floor thing, and they lowered their friend to the roof. Mm -hmm. But isn't it funny how you know when they did this you know you know see they you know Jesus got to be sought out. Mm -hmm. I mean you got you know you got to seek Jesus out. You have to seek him out. You have to these guys find found help for their friend. Yes. Yeah, you know, and it's because Jesus, the Lord wants to help. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He wants to do it, and because God genuinely loves people, right? And cares about people. Yeah, you know, it shows us. You know, the compassion of Jesus. Mm -hmm. You know, the compassion of Jesus revealed the depth of His love for people. That it, you know, it was it, His love moved Him to reach out to hurting people all around Him. Right. Never do you see here that Jesus says, "Well, no, I can't heal you." No. Never, but, you, you know what? No, I see that too in that verse the the power of the lord was present for him to heal the sick yes you know that that right there you know yes amen power of the lord does it, yeah it, it, and luke it says that yeah yeah right there luke, yeah it says what is it where does it say that it says it in verse uh seven or yeah seven at the end of it and the power of the Lord was present for him to heal the sick. Right. It says it in my interpretation. Right. Oh, Gospel Mark. Uh, no, and in, in, in Luke. Luke five seven. Yeah, but you. What what Bible do you have? Is it New King James? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and mine's NIV. Okay. So. So you know, and and, and so, the Lord had created this atmosphere mm -hmm. to, for people to be healed, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Now I know that you know, I mean Jesus met the needs of those all around in powerful right. ways. Jesus healed those that were sick. He taught yeah. that those who were suffering with spiritual misconceptions that, you know, they can get out of them. Yeah. You know, he cast out demons. He, you know, he made the blind see. I mean, he did all kinds of great stuff. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I mean, those who had diseases. Look, at, there ain't no disease that Jesus can't heal. That's right. This coronavirus, you know, is, is very small. 
thing for the Lord to do. <laughs> so we have to believe for God for ourselves. We have to believe God that God can do it. Right. But you notice that, I mean, I just noticed about the Lord. You know, he accepts people for who they are. Right, where they're at. Yeah. You know, you believe that you think that's so good? Mm -hmm. I think that's good, huh? Because mm -hmm. he has such love. He's love. You know, I always thought that when I, you know, when I first became a Christian that, you know, I had to be like everything, you know, I had to get a suit. I had to do all kinds of stuff, you know, look a certain way. When really it right. wasn't, you know, because God's not concerned about the outer. That's right. That's what, um, that's what I think so many of us think. You know, we have to wait till we're perfect, you know, to um, come to the Lord. Yes. You know, like everything's got to be right, you know, just right. Yes. And it keeps a lot of us from coming to the Lord because we're never going to be perfect and we're never going to have everything just right, yeah. you know. But yeah, he wants us just as we are. He says, come just as you are, you know. Yeah. And I think that that's, that's, that, that's so, you know, it's so powerful. You right. Know? That, religion's the one that says you know i mean i've, I've got to be perfect and i never seen jesus around people that all had it together right i mean he was always around those who were diseased that were dirty the down and outs mm -hmm. i mean you know you look at the, the prostitutes there were people that were that were handicapped people that were blind i mean people that had you know who leprosy, society, leprosy look at this leprosy. demon possessed yeah you yep. ever see him? Like, hey, I'm gonna go hang out with those guys that got together over there. <laughs> oh, tax yeah. collectors. Yeah, tax collectors. Yeah, fishermen, average fishermen. men. Yeah. And because the Lord accepted people the way they were, you know, there was no, there was no boundaries. There was no, you know, there was no like, well, I have to get there. You know, I can't, I can't get close to God, or I can't go. Hey, God, God is everywhere. That's right. When we pray, the Lord is everywhere. You know, look at you and I. Look at you. If you're watching tonight, look at you. Have the power. To pray for people and people can be healed yes. in Jesus' name. Not in your name, but in the, in name, the name of Jesus. Of Jesus. And so we, God's given us the power. Right. You got the power in you. You know, and a long time ago, there used to be a commercial. You got the power. <laughs> well, you got the power. In reality, you got the power. That's I right. Mean, the Holy Spirit power. You know, it's funny how even through all these people that Jesus was there, that, you know, there's not one person that Jesus did not accept. Right. Now, many didn't accept accepted. him. The Pharisees, the Sadducees, the, the scribes, they all were finding ways to, to kill Jesus. They, yeah. you know, they didn't like him. But Jesus even tried to win them over. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, he actually he did. You know, look at Joseph. Mm -hmm. Nicodemus. Nicodemus. You know, all these men, Joseph, Arrhythmia, mm -hmm. uh, Nicodemus. These guys mm -hmm. were, all, were all Pharisees. Mm -hmm. And so they knew the law. They knew what was taught to the people. So when Jesus came in the picture, when he's coming in the picture, now they're looking and say, hey, you know what? Hey, man, there's, there's something happening here. That's why right. it says in that scripture, when you read there, the last part, that they were all amazed and they all glorified God and were filled with fear, saying, mm -hmm. we have seen strange things today. Now, you know, again, your Bible might say, hey, we've seen remarkable things happen today. Right. Or we've seen, our lives are never the same today. Right. But, you, know, you know what, 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 what Luke is actually saying, what, what they said? When you when you read that and you break that down in verse twenty six, we have seen strange things. You know what they were trying to say? We've seen things, but we can't explain it. So we're not gonna we're not gonna say we agree with it or we don't agree. So it's kind of like sitting on the fence. Right. Well, things that you don't understand. Yeah. A lot it's, of times, and a lot of times people try expect and we don't, to understand yeah, everything. Yeah. We, sometimes we don't understand so. Right. Sometimes you know we don't understand things. We say, well, maybe this happened. You know, and you know people who are you know um, pragmatic and people who are you know pessimistic who are you know who are very negative they'll look at the negative part right but you and us as christians we have to look at the positive we have to say man jesus healed those who came to him mm -hmm. not one time did i find in the gospel that jesus said well look you come back to me on tuesday you know or here's two pills take them you walk you know no he always made the people do something though mm -hmm. he always made them you know do something whether by belief when jesus healed this man he told him, pick up pick your mat. mat. Mm -hmm. You know what he was saying there? What was he saying? You know what he was saying. What were you saying? He was saying this. Pick up your old life and get on with your new life. Oh, I love that. Get on with your new life. Yeah. Yeah. Because that old life, you need to go throw in the trash. That mat, I'm sure mm -hmm. he didn't carry that mat back to his house. He probably threw it away on the way home. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because That's that was it. the old him. Mm-hmm. Now he's gonna, there's going to be a new him, a new mm -hmm. life, a new beginning, you know, and and sometimes we don't ever want to, you know, look, we don't try to look for that. 
God wants to give us a new beginning. Yes. Look at you're out here watching tonight. Look at I, I tell you this. Look at sometimes we feel like we're all alone. Sometimes we feel, man, it's just us, you know, and we're fighting the world, we're fighting the devil, we're fighting all these different things. But in reality, you know what? God is here. Yes. God is there. Jesus was there. Jesus, yes. you know, was there. He accepted people that that were there because their lives were were, were were damaged or things happened. But he didn't look at that part. He looked at what they can become, what you can become, what you can be. God never looks at our past and says, you're just your past. You did this, you did that. Thank God for that, huh? Yeah. That God don't take our past and throw in our face. Our family does sometimes, but not us, not not right. God, right? Or the enemy. With the enemy. The to devil tries us. to lie to you and stuff. Yeah, or? to tell us we're not changed. Oh, you know, remember when you did this or that? Yes. Yeah. So, and, and you know, and, there, and there's no, like, cases that cannot be touched by God. Right. There's no two cases that are far gone that God can't reach and touch. There's no two, you know, cases where people can look and, you know, say, well, God won't accept me. Yeah, God will accept you. Yes, he will. And God loves you and cares about you. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he cares for your kids, your your family, your husband, your wife. He looks and he says, man, he, he embraces us when we embrace him, when we come to him, right. you know, when we seek him. These guys, they had to find Jesus. Mm -hmm. And when they found him, they could have got discouraged. Go, oh, well, you know, they probably Too seen many their, people. They, seen their, 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 they brought their friend to Jesus, and they couldn't get in. They could have right. said, okay, we're going to come back next week. We're, you know, we, we, we can't get healed today. You know, Bobby Joe, we're going to bring you in next week. <laughs> huh? Bobby Joe, we'll, you know, we'll do something. You know, we'll come back. We'll take you over there to, you know, the, to Rite Aid and get you some pills and stuff. And, you know, you'll be okay till next week till we can find Jesus somewhere else. No. Right. They were persistent, like you said. Yes. They sought Jesus and they found him mm -hmm. and they weren't leaving until right. they got what they wanted. And that's how you and I got to be. We have to be persistent, man. We got to be like a pit bull on a pork chop. Mm -hmm. huh? Determined, committed. Yeah, you know what pit bulls, how they get? They, yeah. they want to attach. attach. <laughs> I have a pit bull I love. I love Cookie. Oh, cookie, yes. Huh? Oh, Francie, I love, love Cookie. Him. Tommy, I love Cookie. I know. We want to And Cookie him. loves me. <laughs> huh? Yes. Huh? Yes, she loves you. But, but that's how we got to be sometimes. We have to be like persistent like that, you know, and, yes. and, you know, and, and, you know, and that's how, and that's how the Lord wants us to be. Yeah. He wants us to be like that. He wants us to seek him, you know, and look at the people he uses. I mean, how does Jesus see people? He saw them not at they, what they were, but what they could become. become. Mm -hmm. Jesus saw beyond the circumstances and looked into the lives to see the hidden potential yeah. in each person. That's what God sees in you and I. Right. He sees the hidden potential we have to be a good father, Amen. to be a good mother, yes. a good nanny, a good grandpa, a yeah. good you know, a good husband, a good wife, a good you know, a, a good cousin, a good niece. You know, he sees that in us. God don't look at our past and say, "Well, I'm gonna you know, you did this, you gotta you know, do that, you gotta do all." No. Hey, we come to Jesus, you know, we, with a repentful heart. Mm -hmm. God does the rest. Yes, Amen. God begins to heal. Look at Peter, Simon Peter. You know. You, you know, you know, you know, Simon P Peter's name means rock, right? But he wasn't a rock when he first came to Jesus. He was a pebble <laughs> or a reed blowing yeah, in the wind true. back and forth. Yeah. But G notice that Jesus changed his name. Right. Said this, right? P to Peter, Jesus changed his name. That's right. And, you know, look at Paul the Apostle. Oh, Paul yeah. started out to be a murderer. He was a murderer. But Jesus made him into one of the greatest mysteries of yes. all time. Yeah, I mean, you know, you can go through all the whole Bible and see, you know, time and time. Look at Lazarus. Yeah, Lazarus was there. He, you know, he was dead. His life started out in the tomb. Jesus came and made his life again, gave him life again, a sign mm -hmm. of a new and a powerful life in him. Amen. Amen. And so, you know, Jesus has the power to yes. change and transform yes. our lives, but it's us to us to come and to seek Him, you know, and. And, you know, and I, I like how when Jesus, you know, when you see him, you know, you know, people get offended. You know, like the Bible says that the Pharisees got offended. Mm -hmm. And that's sometimes like the religious people. Right. When Jesus told this man, you know, look, look at this, and I'll read it to you. And when the Bible says that the teachers of the Lord were there, and, and, Bible, he, and, and the power of God, the Lord was there to, put, to heal him. They were jealous. And huh? behold, they brought him on the mat, right? And when the crowd could not get, him, they, they get to him, the Bible says in verse 20, when he saw their faith, he said to him, man, your sins are forgiven you. Mm -hmm. So Jesus looked beyond the physical and began to lead, look into the spiritual. Amen. Yeah. Because, you know, sin is a spiritual disease. Right. It kills us. Mm -hmm. You know, our sins, that's why we got to ask God to forgive us every day. Lord, forgive me. Lord, if I've done anything, Lord, forgive me. And, you know, and then that's the, but see, that's the work of the Holy Spirit in us. Mm -hmm. I can't convict anybody. 
right? right? I can't make you feel convicted. Right. I, mean, I can make you feel bad, you know? Yeah. Like sometimes, you guilty. know, sometimes, yeah, guilty, <laughs> put my, put my, yeah. all my things on you, all my, yeah. you know, all my little knickknack things. But <laughs> it's the Lord, it's the Holy Spirit that convicts us of our right. sin. It shows us. You know, and look at when, when Jesus told the man that the Bible says in the scribe, in verse 21, and the scribes and the Pharisees began to reason, saying, who is this that speaks blasphemy? Because remember, that was their job. Right. They were the ones that the people would have to come to, to. At, at one time a year or a couple of times, a year, whatever it was, and bring their offering, their sacrifices to have their sins forgiven. Right. So when Jesus did this, he's actually was telling them, hey, you guys are out of business now. You guys ain't getting more jobs. <laughs> Time to go back to to work somewhere else, huh? Get back in the line, right? <laughs> yeah. Because now the, there's a new dimension of God here now. Right. Because they were the old dimension, the old way, coming to the Lord, bring the sacrifice. You know, Lord, here's my sins, and you give the the priest your sins. He lays your lay the hands on the goat or the sheep, whatever it was. And take and it. And take, the, yeah, holy take, of holies. Yeah. yeah. And they would take it in, offer the sacrifice, and you know, and then then you have to. As soon as you got out of the line, you had to get back in line, right? To do it again because right. you sinned again, walking right. out of line, right? But Jesus broke that. That when He died, the Bible says that the, the temple was torn in two. That's right. That the division between the holy of holies and the priest it was no longer needed no more. Yeah. That you have to do that no more. It was broken down, and so you know, and, and I, you know, it's so cool how these guys they came. And they had confidence in Jesus, mm -hmm. you know. Go ahead, John. Go ahead, say something. No, uh, well, just to elaborate on what you were saying, kind of like the Pharisees, they were um, ambitious. They wanted all the attention. They were, you know, they wanted the people to come to them, you know, right? Yes. They were jealous. They were jealous. They didn't understand the things right. of the Lord. Yes. You know. Yes. You always got your critics. And even in serving the Lord, you're going to have critics. Are we? Oh, yes. No way, Jose. No. And you're going to have people that are going to want your position, even at work or say, at home, you know, whatever you do, you know. Yeah. But how do you deal with those? Give it to Jesus. Well, Jesus remained focused and he knew what he was here for. Yeah. And he was there to save souls. He was there to bring people back to the Lord, yeah. to God, you know. You know, and, you know, it's funny how these, these men really had confidence in Jesus. Yeah. I mean, to tear up somebody's house, the roof, oh, no. right? <laughs> yes. You know, what would you know, we'll go to God? Jesus said, okay, wait, wait a minute. You know, wait a minute. No, hey, come back to me next week. <laughs> yeah. But no, God, Jesus didn't do that. You know, see, they, they were, mm -hmm. these four men were so confident that Jesus could heal their friend. Right. They were so confident they went out to find Jesus and asked for help. I mean. Well, they had faith. They had faith to believe that Jesus could heal their friend. Yes. You know, and that's what Jesus seen their faith, and that's why their friend was healed. It wasn't his faith on the mat; it was the friend's faith, yes. you know, that carried their him there. You know, but the faith that you know they knew, they heard stories just like us when we first get saved. I mean, you know, we hear the things that God did. He delivered people. He, you know, delivered them from a drug addiction, a life of crime, um, you know, from um, one time, you know, they're angry, evil, mean people. Then the next time you see them, they're loving, kind, and caring. And you're like, oh, what happened to this person? You want that, what they have, you know? And so they heard the stories probably of the leopard being healed and, you know, him raising Lazarus from the dead. I mean, they probably heard stories about it, you know? Yeah. This man, he could do miracles, and they believed in him that, you know what, we take my friend there, he's going to get healed, you know? And so they took their friend there, and it was their faith, their belief in him, that he was a miracle, you know? Yeah. Miracle, he made, he, I mean, you know, and that's the thing about knowing the Lord, you know, you know, we have to come to God in confidence, you know, right. You know, there's no if he's maybe should be, you know, see, and I like what these guys, these men, they came to Jesus to help their friend, mm -hmm. but they didn't give up. They no. see an obstacle. They seen that they couldn't get to the front door and they say, well, you know what? They, they didn't give up. They said, you know what? They were persistent. Yeah, they pushed past you know, the crowd. When they when these men got to the house where Jesus was healing, mm -hmm. there was a massive there was a massive crowd. The right. Bible says, no way to get through. So they took a different approach and they lowered their friend to the roof. That tells me that they wouldn't give up. 
Right. Sometimes we give up on people. Sometimes Ooh. we give up on people. We we don't, you know, you know. Now I know we're not God. We're not God, but I mean, sometimes in our own personal lives and our family's lives, you know, and, you know, we can't give up on anybody. No. You know, I think about this all the time because you know, it's true. When you look at the crowds, you look at people. Sometimes you think, well, they don't want God, but God cares about them, even though that they don't want God. Because you know, the Bible says that one time we were all enemies of God. Mm -hmm. But now, because of the grace of God, because because God the Lord touched our lives, Amen. you know. There's God loves us now. We're part of you know of 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 the, of the plan of God for salvation. You know for us, but God don't just save a person to save them. There's always a plan behind that person. There's always something God wants to do, and so we have to think about that. You know, you know about this sometimes. If you ever feel like giving up on your friends or your family, you can't. You know, sometimes we feel because there's too many obstacles or too far away or this happens. You know what? See, these men came looking for healing. And they found forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Forgiveness. Even more, mm -hmm. huh? That when the Lord looked up, you know, the Lord didn't even look at the guy. He probably seen the guy, you know, God was being Lord. But he looked at these guys. Mm -hmm. He seen that they, man, they were persistent. And I, you know what? I wonder the Lord, not only was he what he said, but he, what he looked at, he's probably like, man, these guys, man, they're, they're not going to give up. Right. Peter was probably mad because that was his house. He has to fix that roof again later on. Yeah. That, you know? that when when I think about that, I think about persistent and all the obstacles that come against us to keep us from, you know, even listening to God's word or even reading or even praying. You know. Yeah. Um, we have to be persistent in that every day. You know. Um, yes. There's obstacles that come our way, like busyness. You know, our family's needs. You know, but. We have to put God as number one, you know, in our lives. I think about even going to church. There were times I didn't want to get out of bed, you know. The pillow monster had me, as we say. But those obstacles, you know, even even when I was sick, you know, I didn't feel good or whatever. Those were obstacles that tried to keep me from, you know, going to church or doing what I know I needed to do for the Lord. Amen. You know, and we do have to be persistent. We have to press on be, beyond those obstacles. When you said obstacles, that's what I was thinking about. Yeah. You know, that came to my mind. Well, and that's the thing. How many of us have friends and family who we know, we know man, that they're going through a lot of stuff? And, mm -hmm. and you know, and you know, because sin is a disease. Mm -hmm. It's a sickness. Jesus, you know, because he perceived in himself what they were thinking. So Jesus said, well, I'm going I'm to talk to them in a way they can understand. Right. He, he didn't make it complicated because sometimes people want to make the gospel complicated. Right. And, and the Bible simple. is not complicated. It's simple. Yeah. Keep it you know, simple. It's simple. You know, reading read, read this, this word is simple. It's not the it's word. Not, you don't take, you don't have to be a, cross, a scientist yeah. or, you know, you don't have to be a person who, who, who graduated from CIT or MIT or whatever. <laughs> you can be anybody, you know, and God can minister to you and God can show you and God can save mm -hmm. your, saves our lives. And he begins to use our lives as uh, as an ob not obstacle, but a, as a plan or design a to reach others, a vehicle right, to reach others. Right. And so, you know, I mean, I want to see people saved for Jesus. That's my whole thing. I mean, you know, I, I want to see people. I don't want nobody to go to hell either. Right. You know, even, you know, I would never wish that even on my the people who I hate. You know, and a lot of us, we hate a lot of people. I know you can put amen up there, right? <laughs> but the Bible says we're called to love people and care about people and, and love them and, and, and be there for them. And, and as we do, God begins to turn it around for us, you know. And so what I'm saying here tonight is that when Jesus did this, when he, when he, when he, when he seen these guys and seen their faith, you know, he said, man, he said, these guys have to lay a faith. And so when, when, when he started telling the guy, look, at your sins are forgiven, you know, get, you know your, your sins, are, which are many, you know, Get up, you know, you're going mm -hmm. to do this. Mm -hmm. But the Bible says that these these guys, the Pharisees, the scribes, they got all mad. They got all bent of shape. Mm -hmm. and, you they know, got chesty. And yeah, and so, <laughs> what he, so what he tells me, he says, okay, he says, and he, that's when he, he told them, what are you raising in your hearts? Mm -hmm. Which is easier to say, your sins are forgiven you, or to say, rise up and walk? Because both are easy to say. Right. Right? But only really the one that makes a difference is the most important. Yeah which is your sins are forgiven. Do you think they were afraid of Jesus? Because he did things that they could never do. They never seen anything like it before. Yeah, yeah I think so. I mean, miracles, you know, come on. Um, they heard of Elijah. They heard of Moses opening the Red Sea, Elijah, you know. 
um, with all the prophets, you know, and yes. uh, Baal. I mean, they heard stories of it, but they never seen it with their eyes. Do you think maybe because he was going around doing all these miracles and wonders that they were like afraid of what they didn't know? Yes. You know, and fear could paralyze us and keep us from, yeah. you know, because they too were human. And, and, and the Lord, because even the Lord said here, he knew what was in their hearts. He knew what they were thinking, you know, and then they were blown away because how does this man know what we're thinking? You know, mm -hmm. it could have been, they were afraid. They didn't, you know, have understanding of it either. Yes. Even Nicodemus, he went at night to Jesus and he yeah. asked him because he was curious yeah. because he knew something was different about the Lord. Yeah. You know, what do you tell, what do you tell Jesus? Though? He says, no one can do the things you do. Right. And this God sent him. Oh yeah. That was his words to Jesus. Uh-huh. And so, you know, and that's, and that's, and that's the Lord's words of any of us. Right. You know? But we know it was all the Lord's plan. Yeah. You know, thank God that he did go to the cross for us because otherwise we would have never been reconciliated back to God. Our mm -hmm. sins would never have been forgiven, you know, if it weren't for the cross. You know, so, it's at the cross. So what would you tell people out there? What would you need to do? I, I, I would say this. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you this. I would say this. If you know mm -hmm. someone that needs the Lord, hey, we gotta take him to Jesus. We gotta take him to Jesus. We gotta take him to the Lord. You know, and you know, what I mean by that, we need to mean to pray for them. Right. You know, we need to pray for them and believe God for them because, you know, I mean, there's there's no better way than to than to you know pray for people because you know and bring them to the Lord because it's God that does the work anyway. That's right. You know, it's God that does the work. I'm never given up. You know, and and even like inviting people to church, inviting them to watch the online service. Mm -hmm. You know, what better way to get people saved than to than to invite them into the atmosphere where God can change. Yes. You know, when you're in this atmosphere, you know, of the Lord, whether it be in your house or church or in the streets, where let me tell you, it doesn't matter. You don't got to be in a church to see a miracle. Right. You don't got to be in a church, you know, to to witness a testimony of a person whose, whose life has been changed and transformed by the power of God. You don't got You can be anywhere. You know, that's why, you know, I'm sometimes I'm in a store or sometimes I'm you know doing something or driving. I get off my car and people will start asking me. Some guy asked me that day, well, how long have you been here in the valley? How long have you been? Well, I've been here, you know, I had a house here for many years, but I never lived. I lived in Ireland. And as soon as I started telling him that. He goes, oh, he started, he started confessing to me. You know, I go to church over here. Or I haven't gone. He said he didn't go for a long time. But, mm. And then he goes, well, what do you do? And I said, well, I'm a pastor. And then that made him turn white, you know. <laughs> and he started telling me, well, I used to go to this church and that church. He started telling me all the churches he went to. But I didn't ask him that. All I wanted was, hey, who, where are you fellowshipping? What are you doing? Because, you know, that's the thing about us. We take people to Jesus. We invite them to church. And we let God do his work. Yes, amen. And pray. We pray for them. Hey, God, touch them. You know, and no better way to bring people to the Lord than to, than to you know, pray for them first mm -hmm. and then, you know, invite them to come mm -hmm. and then let the Lord do the, His work. Because mm -hmm. let me tell you, our arm can only reach so far, but God's arm reaches farther than we can imagine. Yeah. Amen? Amen. God's arm reaches into the yeah. hearts. The, 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 the main thing of our lives, our hearts. Amen? That's what That's God right. wants to reach into tonight. Right. Amen? Amen. Amen. Yes. So we Amen. that. No, I think that's great. <laughs> How much better can it get? <laughs> you well, know. Thank you, sis. <laughs> thank God for him rescuing yes, us. Yes, thank God for rescuing us. Uh, thank God yes, for saving us. I'm so grateful. Amen. Because when you think about it, you know, we didn't deserve to be saved. That's right. We didn't deserve the life that we have, but thank God that God did something and right. changed our hearts. And, and, you know, and we know what he's doing. You know what's God. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know how you know it's God? Because God will have you do things that you never thought you could do. Amen. That's uh, right. He'll, he'll have you do things that you think, man, I can never do that. You know, I never thought I could ever talk to people or say anything. That's true. I mean, when I first gave my heart to the Lord, I told the Lord, I'll do anything, but I'm never going to testify. I'm never going to talk. Or <laughs> Now you can't keep me quiet. Right. Now you can't stop me because I know what my God is. I know what the Lord has done in my life. Amen. Now it's time for us to tell people what the Lord has done in their lives. Yes. Amen. But he's in our lives. We Amen. Yeah. And so, Delivered you know, a, a, a family that stays together. Happy. Praise together. <laughs> yeah, huh? that's right. That's right. Pray. I love then that. Praying for everything. Praying for your meals. Praying that. for the car. Child mercies. You get in the car. Pray for the service before you come to, to watching online here tonight. You got to pray because you ask right. God to bring revelation. God to show right. you. And God will begin to tug at your heart and show you the things he needs to show you. Amen. Yeah, you set the atmosphere in your house. Mm -hmm. You set the atmosphere in the church when you pray before, you know, because you're inviting God's presence. Yeah. 
you know, and he inhabits the praises, the worship, you know, of his people. He loves it. And mm -hmm. he inhabits, which means he comes and he habit, you know, he take, he, he, he uh, how would you describe? Inhabits the praises of his people. Yeah. And, and he comes right in the middle of a Right. Because he loves it. Yes. When we really, with our hearts. And he embraces us. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and, and, you know, and uh, this is so good that God is, what he's done. And I, I love, yes. I love the story because I love how the outcome. Amen. You know, the Bible says, you know, that this guy, he was, he was never the same that day. No. His life was totally transformed. Mm -hmm. You know, and you know, and, and you know, and, and, and he even says that he was so happy. Like I talked about last week about how, how they were, you know, he was so happy. But the Bible says that this man departed to his house, glorifying God. And that's what we want to do. We want to how glorify you not? God. Right. How God, could you, you get not? all the glory. We don't get the glory. God gets the glory. Yes, Amen. That's right. And let's, let's believe that here today for people mm -hmm. watching. Look, you might be watching here tonight. You might say, you know what? I need a special touch of God upon my life. Amen. You're watching it tonight and say, you know what, Lord, I need God to do something, you know, and, you know, you heard the the, 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 the witnesses in the Bible, you heard the, the story of this man who, his friends cared some, so, for him so much that they cut a hole through a roof and lowered him at the, to the feet of Jesus. They brought their one, their friend, to Jesus. Right. Like what you and I got to do. We got to bring our friends to Jesus. Amen? Amen. God didn't just save us to save us. He saved us for a purpose and a reason. Amen whether to, to help our family, to help our friends, but, but to bring people, Lord, because hey, hell was not made for the Christian. Hell was made for Satan and all his demons, amen? Hell was not made for us. And God, the Bible says that God doesn't want anyone to go to hell, That's amen? Right. Hell was not made for us. Heaven was made for you and I. Mm -hmm. And I pray that, you know, tonight that this message ministered to you. And, you know, I'm going to ask you to close your eyes, right where you're at. Close your eyes, and I want to pray with you. And you might be here, you might not be serving the Lord the way you should be. You might not be doing, you know, what you should be doing. And if that's you, I want you to say this prayer with me tonight. And then I'm going to pray for everyone again at the end. Mm -hmm. But say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, I come before you tonight. I come before you tonight. And I ask you, Lord, ask you, to, show me to show me what I need to do. What I need to do. And, Lord, I believe, and Lord, I believe that you died for me. That you died for me. And, you and you rose again on that Resurrection Sunday. On that resurrection Sunday. And, Father, right now, right now, I ask you to take my life and to use it for your honor and your glory. And I love you. In Jesus, name. in Jesus' name, amen. amen. Father, I pray for all those yes, that said that prayer God. tonight. Amen. And Lord, those that are watching that need a special touch, I pray, yes. Lord, don't let them be, Lord, don't let them be unashamed. Don't let yes. them go, uh, you know, to look for something else. Let them find the, the, the love of Jesus within their hearts right now. I pray, let the yes. lo love of heaven begin to encircle them. Let the love of, of angels, my God, the Lord, who are looking yes. down, let them, yes. Lord, your word says, when oh someone God. gives their life to you, God, there's a party in heaven. Yeah. Father, I pray, let the party Spirit. expand to the outer rim, God, to those who know you and yes. love you and are called according to your purpose. Yes. And Father, I pray, move Lord. in a special Away. We yes, thank you for dying. We thank God. you for all those watching. Thank and Lord, you, you praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen, amen and thank amen. You, Lord. Amen. Well, God amen. bless you. Amen. Thank you yes. again for the again tonight. And you know, we're gonna we're gonna um, we're gonna close, you know, we're, we're closing, right? Yes. But I want to remind you, those paying your tithes, you can still send your tithes to P.O. Box two five three, Lake Isabella, California, mm -hmm. nine three two four zero. And you know, we're just so excited what God's doing. And uh, don't forget this Sunday we're gonna talk about, you know. When things look rough, when things look, you know, a little rough, but also about end time. Not end times completely, but how we see the end coming. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because we're, we're you know, tell you, God has so much more to do. Yes. And I don't think it's, you know, it's, you know, it's appropriate to talk about doomsday and all that because it's not happening. No. God is gathering His witnesses, gathering His saints. That's right. For a, a, a one time or another, another explosion. Of his glory and his power. Amen. Man. So God bless you. Amen. We'll see you uh, Sunday. We'll see you on Friday, Friday service. Amen. Right, service. Friday, you service. But God bless you. We love you. Have a good have a good night. Virginia. And may the Lord bless you. Yeah. Amen.